And, um, you already know Prosecutor Izumita. Long time no see, Yagami Sensei. Courtroom just hasn't been the same without you around. Damn near breaks my heart. So you're defending Amara, huh? Nope, Shintani's handling it. I'm just collecting evidence. Looks like you don't need that walk home off of you. Later. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You're not a lawyer anymore. Even after your landmark acquittal. Too bad. I only won because I was up against you. You shut your damn mouth. If it wasn't for your bullshit logic, that murderer would have been behind bars. An innocent girl died because of you. Tell me what was so bullshit about my defense then. Come on, say it. Everything! That's enough, Izumira. It's okay, Izumira-san. Uh, thanks for thinking of me, Yagami-kun. Farewell. That same passerby watched Hamura-san walk into Sana Goten. Which can only be seen as proof of Hamura-san's innocence. To that end, I have a question for the prosecution. Did you have any prior knowledge of this video before the trial began? I assure you that we reviewed all the relevant footage from the sauna. And yet the defendant was nowhere to be found, counsel. At least so I was told. Meaning, you never actually went to examine the site personally then. Would you say that's correct? Yes. My associates took care of that. Nonetheless, the defense's video is far too blurry to clearly identify either participant. There's no way to tell whether the man in the footage was the defendant or just a random pedestrian. <laughs> Thank you very much. In that case, the defense would like to call a witness to the stand. Your Honor, clearly this witness has no credibility. How does the defense respond? I admit, the witness was shaken up before. But I believe that's a perfectly understandable response. This is his first time in court, after all. I have no doubts regarding his credibility. This Stardust establishment. It's a host club, yes? How long have you been employed there? About two years. For that short a time frame, you seem to have an awful lot of trouble with your customers. Huh? I'm not sure what you mean. Several of them have approached you in hopes of marriage, have they not? They come spending huge sums of cash, so you act like you're ready to seal the deal. You say whatever it takes to make them happy in the moment. But your story changes once things start to get real. Five women have filed reports with the Consumer Affairs Bureau. And those are just the ones who have stepped forward. Can we really trust the words of such a manipulative man? With these character traits in mind, I sincerely doubt the credibility of the witness's testimony. And if the witness is indeed lying, the defendant's alibi is invalid. That is all. How does the defense respond? I'd like to continue on the topic of credibility. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Prosecutor? Go ahead. First, allow me to fast forward the security footage to just a few days after the crime. Oddly enough, we'll be looking at the exact day the prosecution filed their suit. Hmm. Isn't that you, Prosecutor? Uh, yes. And in this footage, you're reenacting the altercation that took place between the defendant and our witness, yes? What? 
No. Well, that's strange. You stated earlier that you hadn't seen any footage from the camera near the sauna. But then, how would you be able to reenact things exactly as they went down? You also claimed you did not inspect the area yourself. It seems that wasn't the truth. Why are you hiding the truth from us, Prosecutor? <laughs> You're wrong! As you can see, the original footage isn't exactly clear. I would understand if you had denied that the defendant was the man who punched our witness. But instead, you claimed you hadn't seen the footage at all. If I had a guess, when you first saw the footage, you realized Hamra might have been the other man. At the very least, you couldn't rule out the possibility. So you lied, I would say. <laughs> that, that's not true. Can we be sure that what you say is credible? You've already lied outright in a court of law. And unfortunately for you, there's only one person who thinks the defendant is guilty. And that's you, prosecutor. The night Kume got murdered, Hamura was holed up in Sauna Goten till morning. The footage from the security camera, Hamra's alibi, Seiya's testimony, it all lined up. With a story that airtight, there's no chance he could have killed Kume. We find the defendant, Kyohei Hamra, innocent. I will now clarify the reasoning behind this decision. Defendant, please be seated. The judge was right. My office might be small, but that doesn't mean I don't have a reputation to uphold. And what time was that? Around 7.50? You're sure? Yes, the patients eat breakfast at precisely 8 o'clock. I always head to the break room myself, uh, right around then, too. This break room, to be precise? That's correct. Our more mobile patients walk there for breakfast instead of eating in their own rooms. Then, while the nurses help the patients eat, I ask about how they feel and how the medicine is treating them. And on the day of Wakusan's disappearance, you pass by his room before going to the break room? Yes. And in that room, you saw Wakusan lying on the bed? Yes. Can you describe the situation to us as you remember it? The door has a window, so you can see into the room from the hallway. And this is the room you're referring to, yes? That's correct. From where I was standing in the hallway, I could see Waku-san lying in bed. He was asleep, with a blanket covering most of his body. And what time was that? Around 7.50. No further questions. Shono-san was lying when he said he saw Waku-san in the bed. Excuse me? What he saw from the door was likely nothing more than a bulge of sheets. He couldn't have been able to identify it specifically as Waku-san. So to claim as much in his testimony seems like quite an exaggeration, don't you think? But common sense would dictate otherwise, would it not? Who would be in the bed other than Waku-san? But if Shono-san's testimony is invalid, as the defense asserts, we have to consider the possibility that Waku-san was taken in the middle of the night when nobody else was around. After which, the killer could have waited until the morning to plant the body in the defendant's truck. So it's possible that it could have been someone other than Waku-san in that bed. Or maybe even a pillow that you mistook to be Waku-san's body. Isn't that right? Objection! The defense is leading the witness! Sustained.
Please rephrase the question. Shono-san, can you say without a doubt that Waku-san was in that bed when you checked on him? I... I, I don't think I can, no. Then the defense rests. But I do have a quick remark for the prosecution. Huh? The charges against my client stem from your assertion that he's the only possible suspect, assuming the crime took place within the stated time frame. However, the defense has proven without a doubt that Shono-san's testimony is unreliable, establishing reasonable doubt for my client. I would suggest that that you withdraw the charges against my client. With such inconclusive evidence, you'll only be wasting the court's precious time. The prosecution does not consider the witness's testimony inconclusive. His memory of the incident may be fuzzy, yes, but that doesn't change that he saw the victim. So your whole case is based on a fuzzy memory? This promising young man's future is at stake, and you're willing to throw that away on unreliable testimony? Dr. Shono is a bright and diligent researcher. After watching his own grandmother develop dementia, he vowed to create a drug that could cure the disease. After paying his own way through medical school, he went on to become the head researcher at the ADDC. Day after day, Dr. Shono visits his sick patients out of the kindness of his heart, leading to his valiant testimony here today. If you want to know whether I trust this man, then my answer is a resounding yes. In other words, because he's such a great researcher, his testimony is infallible. His own admission that he's not sure is somehow overlooked? Is that the sum of it? <sighs> because from here, it sounds like you're putting your faith in Shono-san's title, not his testimony today. The prosecution is not as easily swayed as you think. And you want to talk reputation? What of your client's history of domestic abuse? Six years ago, the defendant broke his girlfriend's finger. The poor girl is still suffering from the effects. And the cause? A minor, drunken disagreement. Now, fast forward to what occurred a few days prior to the crime. Wakusan, suspecting the defendant of stealing his wallet, lashed out and punched the defendant in the face. Given the clearly violent nature of Okubo-san here, that alone would be motivation enough to murder the Poor old. Is something wrong, ma'am? Please remain seated while court is in session. appreciated huh even the chief prosecutors in on this please come in so these are the wolves a room full of prosecutors huh Yagami sensei I believe Kuroiwa san already told you this but we want to talk to you about Shintani Sensei's murder. However, this is not a courtroom. And we're not strangers. Or wolves. Just try to relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, relaxed, right. I'm not telling you what you want to hear, though. You want me to say I killed Shintani, right? Sorry, not happening. <laughs> the burden of proof's on you, anyway. So why don't we start there? Why do you think I did it? Yagami-sensei, where were you on the night of Shintani-sensei's murder? Answer my question with another question? <laughs> That's not very nice. Do you have an alibi for that evening? You heard of a company called KJ Art? 
The place is a front for some Kansai Yakuza, the Kyore clan. On the night of the crime, I was near there with their captain, Shioya. He'll back my story up, I'm sure. And care to explain why Shintani-sensei's corpse was found in your office? I was hoping you could tell me. Maybe the real killer could answer that for you. Naturally. That's why I called you here. Mind if I interject? Go right ahead, Morichi-san. Yagami-san, you stole a look at Shintani-sensei's call history before the police arrived, yes? Not long before his death, he placed a call to the Advanced Drug Development Center. Knowing that, you barged into the center and interrogated both Kido-san and Shono-san. Why would you do such a thing? I wanted to figure out what made Shintani a target, who wanted him dead. Is that not the police's job? I couldn't leave it to them, or the prosecution. After all, you guys have a bad habit of going after the wrong guy. Kinda like right now. I see. So you mean to imply someone else killed Shintani-sensei? Do you have anything that could prove that claim? The burden of proof rests on the prosecution. It's not my place to take on such a heavy responsibility. There's no need to be like that, Yagami-san. As we said before, this isn't a courtroom. It'd be an honor to hear your thoughts on the matter. Oh yeah? How about someone says please? Please. Great. I'll tell you what I know. Before we get to Shintani's murder, there are a few things I need to cover. One year ago, the ADDC published a research paper on a new drug they were developing called AD9. This drug has gained global recognition as the thing that may finally cure Alzheimer's disease. What hasn't gained recognition is the fact that someone from the ADDC was murdered six months ago. An ADDC member murdered? Who? The vice director, Toru Hashiki. Hashiki was seen arguing with a strange man in Kamurocho before being found lying beaten in the street. He died in the hospital three weeks later. The culprit is still at large. Did you know of this case? It's the first I've heard of it. Understandable. It didn't make many headlines. Incidentally, this Hashiki guy had a pretty big secret. Uh-huh. Turns out he was working for the Kajihira Group, a massive construction company based out of Kansai. Kajihira was planning to redevelop the land the ADDC sits on. He'd already settled it with the Minister of Health, had the Kyore clan muscle in on the turf too. But the plan fell apart when AD9 was announced. Kajihira ended up taking a pretty big hit. To the tune of a hundred billion yen. What? That's when Hashiki came in, swearing to Kajihira that he'd scuttle AD9, no matter what it took. <sighs> Just before he was beaten half to death, Hashiki went out with another member of the ADDC. Someone deeply involved in the development of AD9. Someone he thought he could manipulate. I'm sure you recognize this man, Izumira-san. Three years ago, he testified about the murder that had taken place at the ADDC. He claimed he had seen the victim, a patient by the name of Waku, still alive. I remember him. You're referring to Dr. Shono? Mm-hmm. He's also the head of the 89 research team. Hashiki was grilling Shono, convinced that there was something fishy going on with 89. Like what? He thought they had fabricated data and falsified the effects of the drug. After all, it wasn't until rumors of closing the ADDC started swirling that director Kido suddenly announced 89. Hashiki was convinced was all too convenient to be coincidence. But that doubt didn't sit well with those who stood to rake in massive profits off 89's development. Are you implying Hashiki's murder was premeditated? <laughs> Sounds like we're finally on the same page, Izumita-san. I had the exact same thought. 
Taking all this into account, doesn't it seem like there really is something fishy about 89? Hmm. But let's get back to Shintani. Just before he was murdered, he called the ADDC and tried to get in touch with a very specific someone. Maybe that phone call provoked whoever is trying to hide the truth about 89. Shintani was an obstacle, just like Hashiki. He had to be removed. What I'm saying is, there's a chance anyone who gets too close to learning the true nature of 89 is being murdered. And if you haven't investigated down that path, then one thing's pretty clear. You have a lot more work to do before you can arrest me, wouldn't you say? Answer me, Izumita! If you still want to bring me in, let's see some proof. All these prosecutors, and nobody's got any proof. <laughs> That's quite a theory, Yagami-san. Truly fascinating. There were details in there even we weren't aware of. You've clearly done your homework. I'd be glad to hand over my findings if it'll help. After all, 89's practically a household name at this point. Lifting the lid on it might be too much for me to handle all on my own. And besides, I think I'd rather work with you than Izumita here. You need to lose the attitude, Yagami. Sorry, I need to take this. Yes, hello? Is that so? Yes, you've done excellent work. Thank you. Just so you're aware, the prosecution has made a coordinated effort with law enforcement. We've already submitted a request for the court to issue a warrant. I'm sorry for the call. But that was the verification of our request, you see. You're still gonna arrest me after all this, huh? Fortunately, you're not the one under arrest. What? I wouldn't celebrate. We're not done with you just yet. It's in the interest of closing the case. Listen here, Yagami. You know who Shintani's killer was? It's your old friend, Ayabe. What? Striations on the recovered bullet are a perfect match to his firearm. There's no doubt. He's the one. <laughs> like it or not, he's going down. But the prosecution's eye for such detail is wanting, and Detective Ayabe is indicted for Shintani's murder. Striations on the recovered bullet are a perfect match to his firearm. There's no doubt. He's the one. <laughs> like it or not, he's going down. Hmm. Apologies for keeping you in the dark. It was imperative for Ayabe to be completely oblivious to our suspicions of him, after all. This is a murder charge against an active officer. To put it plainly, it takes more effort to actually make an arrest. So, we had to pretend you were our primary suspect. You and Ayabe have gotten to be pretty cozy these days. Suspecting you was the perfect way to divert his attention. I see. So this was all some kind of act? An act? Not at all, I assure you. And I believe you should know. We're aware of Ayabe's side job. Ayabe was an informant. A spy. He was selling police intel on the black market. We plan to investigate those transactions thoroughly, Yagami-san. And so, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if we see you again in the near future. <clears throat> Speak of the devil, we were just talking about you, Ayabe-san. Listen, Yagami, you gotta help. 
someone set me up. They're saying I killed Shitani. Me. Me. Uh-huh. You're not surprised? Not quite. I already heard. I'm sitting here with the prosecution as we speak. Huh? Yeah. They're looking right at me. Please, Yagami, you have to take my case. I don't know where else to turn. Okay, I'll do it. It's only fair after all you've done. We can talk more later. I'll be there soon. So, I'll see you in court then. Who do you have on the job? Izumita? Should be a good time. Someone is using you, Prosecutor. No matter who that person is, I'm not losing. According to the law, both the prosecution and the defense have to submit all their evidence before even going to court. You can't burst in mid-trial with new info like they do in the movies. We've been going in circles for a while now. We'll never get anywhere like this. You say that, yes. In other words, to we need to make sure all our cards are in order, then show the other side our hand. The rifling marks on the bullet are unshakable proof of guilt. You really want to plead innocent with such a severe disadvantage? How does the defense respond? You can also bargain for a lesser sentence if you so desire. No. We still contend that Detective Ayabe was set up. Our stance remains unchanged. Nobody move! You in the hood! Drop the knife! Now! You're under arrest for attempted murder. The cuffs won't be necessary. He's no longer a threat. Don't worry about your friend. We won't bother prosecuting him. Oh yeah? No crime was committed here. But sir, we can't just... You need to get forensics in here. There's a good chance a series of murders took place in this very room. And what brings you to say that? Kido told me about it. Unfortunately, we'll need a stronger premise than that. They would never issue a warrant on such grounds. <laughs> well, then it's a good thing I have a better reason lined up. Which is what? Trespassing charges against a rogue ex-lawyer. Which makes this... a crime scene. Guess you'll have to block it off. Preserve the evidence, you know? Yagami-kun. How clever. You don't mind being arrested if it means helping your investigation. I suppose this was your plan from the start. That's why you had Fujikun get the police involved. <laughs> you surprise me. Out of the way! Let me through! Vice Minister Ichinose! This place is under the Ministry of Health's jurisdiction. I demand you leave here at once. Huh. I didn't realize you guys were in the love hotel business, Vice Minister. It's a laboratory. Our top secret research facility for AD-9. You have no idea of the fallout this could cause. Then let's find out. Humor me. According to you, this is a secret research facility for AD-9. Yes, Vice Minister? That's correct. Hmm. Our nation's government has invested countless resources into AD-9. It would seem rather foolish if we were to stop its momentum over this. I'm willing to overlook it for AD-9's sake. What? But, sir... Many thanks. Truly, I am in your debt.
Of course, Vice Minister. Now, everyone is to evacuate the premises at once. I hope you can continue your research into 89 without any more disturbances. Let me assure you, Dr. Shono, this will not happen again. Is that so? Meaning... You're working for 89 too, aren't you, Chief Prosecutor? Yagami, what are you doing here? Did you come alone? <sighs> yeah. Good. I sent Mafia you home. I could go for a chat and a coffee, though. Sorry, not interested. What did you have to tell Mafuyu? It has nothing to do with you. Oh, then how about I guess? Huh? The reason you wanted to talk to her was... You were gonna tell her to join forces with Morita. What? Am I wrong? I see what you're getting at. What happened with the Chief Prosecutor and the Ministry of Health bureaucrat? It wasn't normal. Not normal? That's a bit of an understatement. They want to protect 89 so bad, they ignored evidence of a murder under their noses. You're working with them too, aren't you? What are you implying? Chief Prosecutor Morita is part of a conspiracy to push 89 through, no matter the cost. Do you have proof of that? This. I got it from Mafuyu. It's a case file detailing a domestic murder within Morita's family. Sound familiar? This is the first I'm hearing of it. I'll give it to you. If you have the strength to fight. Excuse me? What happens if you find out I'm telling the truth? How far will you go, Izumira? Would you be willing to bring your own boss to justice? Of course. Ask a hundred prosecutors and they'd answer the same way. Huh. <laughs> Maybe you're not as bad as I thought. This incident is what gave Morita motivation to support 89. That's how I see it, at least. This is tragic. Yeah. His sick mom strangled to death by his own brother. <sighs> Morita's doing what he thinks is right in all this. That's why he suppressed evidence earlier. Back at Shono's lab, I mean. <laughs> the mole killed countless people there. It's only natural there'd be traces left behind. Our case would be practically bulletproof if we found them. It's just, I... I can't believe you would do this. The way he acted at the lab, we have to believe he's wrapped up in this. Wouldn't you agree? Izumira! I... I guess I can't deny that. Right? But if he really is trying to protect AD-9... How do we stop him? What can we even do? Well, I was planning to use Aibe's trial to bring all the dark truths about AD-9 out into the light. That's why I chased Hamura down. Why I needed to find Shono's lab. But, Ichinose and Morita crushed those leads before they really even took off. And you don't have the ammo to stop them. <sighs> it hurts to hear the truth laid out like that. But, it is a relief knowing you're not on their side, believe it or not. <laughs> not sure this is the time to be relieved. <sighs> yeah, I know. Hey. Hmm? I was wondering, 
You think we could get Ichinose to testify? Get him called to the stand? Under what pretense? I don't know. Maybe to explain 89? It could be anything, really. He can't say no if the prosecution requests him, right? Then, what do we do once we have him there? We corner him eloquently. Shower him with questions until he gives up. Me and you both. Oh, wait, that's your big plan? Hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. We don't have a chance of winning if we're not willing to take some risks. Okay, I'm in. I'll let you know once I've made the arrangements. <sighs> what a day. Prosecutor Izumira. They've got men monitoring every nook and cranny of your agency. Figured it'd be safer to talk here. More bad news? Is that how you treat a guest? And no, it's good news. Guess it can't be all bad. Ichinose will testify at the trial. So, you convinced him, huh? Run into any trouble? No, it went fairly smoothly. So, you want me to explain 89? Yes, at the upcoming trial. And by that you mean the one for the murdered lawyer? That's right. Before his death, that lawyer made a phone call to Dr. Shono. Of course, we have no reason to believe that call had anything to do with the killing. Dr. Shono in 89? Involved in a murder? <laughs> It's quite far-fetched, if you ask me. A preposterous notion. <laughs> Indeed. However, that doesn't change the fact that the call was made. And so we'll need to explain in court just why it can't be related. Hmm. <sighs> Don't worry. You won't need to say a word about the call itself. Just explain the situation. 89 is a drug of global importance and Dr. Shono and his team have put immense effort into its development. Once you've explained, I'm sure it'll clear the air. Yes, I see. I'm not sure I can portray it accurately, though. I'm not a scientist, after all. If you would be more comfortable, we could always call Dr. Shono to the stand. But its language may in fact be too complicated. I'm not sure our jurors would understand. If possible, I'd prefer it were you up there, Ichinose-san. You have a point. It would be foolish to take up Dr. Shono's time with such an insignificant matter. Very well, I'll do it. Contact the Ministry of Health when the trial date is decided. Thank you very much, sir. If you'll excuse me, I have another meeting to get to. Nice going. You made it sound like if Ichinose didn't testify, Shono would. It worked. Ichinose didn't want to risk Shono getting in there and slipping up. Can't trust anyone to do it but himself. Good work, Izumira. Turns out you can be pretty devious when you want to be. Devious? Really? I'm kidding. Really, I can't thank you enough. We'll have Ichinose out in the open thanks to you. All we have to do now is find a way to corner him. What about Hamura from the Matsugane family? Can we ask him to testify? Mm, he's still on the run. Guy couldn't even be bothered to come to his patriarch's funeral. Of course not. How could he after what he did? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we just grab Kuroiwa and get him to confess to being the mole? You do remember the beating he gave you last time, right? I let my guard down, that's all. Cut it out, you two. Come on, guys. We've got Ichinose right where we want him. We just need to figure out what to do next. You're not gonna win empty-handed, you know. It's Mafuyu. What's up? Ayabe's casino is getting raided by the police. Lamont? Now? Yeah. They just started. Morita is setting the wheels in motion. They've already arrested most of the employees. I get it. It's a character assassination. A crooked cop running an illegal casino. 
No surprise if he commits a murder, too. The chief prosecutor is hitting us where it hurts. Right. Just wanted to give you a heads up. So, how's it looking, Yagami-kun? Do you think you can win? I'll do the best I can. The good news is, I have a lot of help. Thanks for the call, Mafuyu. Of course. See ya. Moritz here in Kamurocho, blowing the lid off Ayabe's casino. In that case, I'd better get going. He's not gonna come here. Well, better safe than sorry. And where are you currently residing? This is the first trial for the murder of Masamichi Shintani. At least, until this very moment. The prosecution moves to call a witness to the stand. Someone who can deny this case's link to the ADDC. The Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health, Kaoru Ichinose. The ADDC bears most of the responsibilities carried out by the Medical Institute. Most notably, the development of AD9, which was announced to the world last year. Director Kido has done a fine job overseeing its evolution into a matter of national import. Can you tell the court what exactly AD9 is? It's a revolutionary drug meant to be a complete cure for Alzheimer's disease. Given how pressing the drastic increase in dementia patients is, we've placed great faith and hope into AD9. Thank you. I have no further questions. Members of the jury, despite the defense's claims that the ADDC is somehow related to this case, the prosecution holds that it is an absurdity to link such a reputable institution to the horrible murder that took place not long ago. That is all. I'm not sure how this is relevant to the case at hand. Oh, come now. Why not indulge him? What? Think back to 2002. But the truth of it is, those murders are the result of human experiments for 89, carried out in a secret lab in the heart of the city. This is all purely gossip. Members of the jury, 89's development is about to enter the clinical trial phase. However, ADDC researchers have already carried out clinical trials behind closed doors. Several people have died as a result. What? Of course, they tried to keep that a secret, but it eventually found its way out. What exactly you mean by that? Not long before his death, Shintane-sensei was told a secret by Captain Hamura of the Matsugane family. A secret that led him right to the ADDC. This secret was that someone from the ADDC was connected to the serial murders taking place in Kamurocho. And so, Shintani-sensei called the center and asked specifically for a researcher named Shono. The man spearheading the 89 human experiments. Enough of this nonsense! Human experimentation! Don't be ridiculous! What kind of trial is being run here? How can he say whatever he wants without a single piece of evidence? Why doesn't the prosecution stop him? Sorry. <laughs> I was enjoying hearing what he had to say. Have you lost your mind? Yes. He's the murderer you set free three years ago. Even though Okobo-kun sitting on death row, waiting for the day they decide it's his turn. Enough! I was only asked here to explain to the jury about AD-9 and the ADDC. How dare you treat me like this? You and Shono hired the Mole to murder for you! That was the only way you'd have patience for your underground human experiments. 
and all to protect the interests of 89. You can't make these claims without proof. Show me your evidence. If you say so. What? Yes. Order in the court. Izumida, where is the chief prosecutor? Is he aware of this farce? About that, sir. The chief prosecutor won't be joining us in court today. Or ever again. What? It turns out he's been abetting crimes for some time now. And so... What the hell is that about? Where's he going? Hoshino-kun, it's all on you now. What? You've always wanted to handle a case on your own, right? Huh? Sorry to spring this on you, but good luck. Shono-kun told me as much. Countless human experiments led him to that conclusion. In other words, AD-9's development has failed. But Shonokun didn't want to admit that. He couldn't say that it was over. That he had killed several people. That it was all for naught. And when exactly did Shono-san tell you all this? Only the other day. It was after hearing that that I decided to testify in this trial. <laughs>